we're back here with Julia Yaffe talking about the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Um, people have trouble understanding what Putin is going to do next. He, he is, as you can say, expect the worst, but you're not exactly sure what that worst next thing will be. You've said that he likes to make the weather. What does that mean? Uh, it's a Russian expression, and it means to basically set the agenda to be the one that everybody is responding to. Um, and that's, that's what was happening all this week. All week, everybody in the U.S., in Europe, and Ukraine was just waiting on one man to make a decision. And I, he really likes that. It's something he really didn't like about Trump, actually, that Trump was suddenly the more pre unpredictable guy, and he kind of took away his one trick. Um, now, it's, now it's his again. He definitely has set the weather in the last couple of weeks. Yeah. Biden is putting together a bunch of weathermen right now, essentially. <laughs> He's gotten to get, like, gotten together Storm Team 5 or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, Jim Cantori or whatever is out there tracking what Putin's going to do. What about the sanctions that Biden has announced that have been put in place? They're fairly significant. They haven't gone as far as kicking them completely out of the international banking system. Do you think they will have any effect, if not in the short term, then in the next few months, as Biden suggested, that it'll take a while for these to set in? I think th it definitely will take a little while to set in, and I think they will do tremendous damage to the Russian economy. But that won't stop Putin. He's not the one who's going to be suffering. The people around him in his, uh, in his closest circle are not going to be the people suffering. It's going to be the pensioners who have been suffering since 2014. So he doesn't need an economy. He doesn't need a growing industry. None of those things are going to affect. He's not afraid of his own people in any way? Um, I think it's not a coincidence that this has happened after a full year of him eradicating the opposition in every sense. And now, a year later, um, this is, it started with Alexei Navalny coming back from Germany after he had recovered from being poisoned by the mm -hmm. FSB. Mm -hmm. More happy news. Sure. Um, he, Putin basically decided, we're done. I let you guys play at opposition politics, at having a free press and having activism and a civil society, we're done. And uh, he disbanded a lot of NGOs, drove a lot of activists and journalists out of the country. People are, you know, people are in jail for posting music videos, for liking something on Facebook. One of Alexei Navalny's lieutenants, a um, young man, was uh, escaped Russia because he had a criminal case brewing against him. So what they did was they arrested his 69-year-old father and sentenced him to three years in a penal colony. So when you see these pro uh, videos of these protests today and people get 900 people getting arrested, it is a much smaller protest than we've seen in the last 10 years. But it's still amazing that that many people came out in this kind of climate where it has become so much more dangerous and terrifying to go against Vladimir Putin publicly. We have to take a, a little break, but when we come back, I will ask Julia if there's anything hopeful she sees in any of this. Stick around.